So here we're talking about Mendelian genetics. Gregory Mendel was a friar who conducted experiments on pea plants. In his experiments, there was controlled mating of the pea plants so that he could try to uh, get desired traits out of them. He observed over several generations um, the results of his experiments. Um, and he used math to interpret and uh, analyze his results. Uh, some important terminology before we get into the rest. Uh, genotypes. A genotype is a set of alleles. Possessed. By an organism. And alleles. Are one of two or more alternative forms of genes, forms of a gene, and one can be dominant and the other can be recessive. Now, the difference between a phenotype is a gene and a genotype is that a genotype is a set of alleles possessed by an organism, but the phenotype is the appearance or manifestation of a trait. So the difference is that, essentially, well, the phenotype is the characteristics that show, and the genotype is kind of like the code. Here we have Mendel's four postulates that he arose with, uh, that he, so there are different crosses that occur. A monohybrid is a cross which occurs with um, two parents with different homozygous traits. And a dihybrid is the crossing of two parents with two different heterozygous traits. So you can think of the dihybrid as two independent monohybrid crosses. But let's take that a little bit slow. This diagram illustrates the concept of the different generations pretty well, the different generations that occur in monohybrid crosses. So here, the first one we have is the P generation, um, where you cross the round P with uh, uh, the pea plants that produce round peas with a pea plant that produced uh, wrinkled peas. The next one was the F1 generation, where all of them appeared round. And then in the F2 generation, the third generation, um, only three-fourths were round and one-fourth was wrinkled. So that, that gives us a three-to-one ratio in this monohybrid cross. So monohybrid crosses show us that um, it, it shows us the law of segregation and it shows us the law of dominance in action and how there's dominant and recessive genes that can, you can retain the recessive gene and then it can appear in the progeny in the next generation. You can use the plant square to illustrate this as well. Here we have the recessive gene. So this is a, we can imagine this as the wrinkled piece since they're both recessive and this is the dominant round P. So here we get big X, little x, big X, little x, big X, little x, big X, little x. And so our F1 generation is all round P's. Now if we cross from that generation, we're going to have dominant recessive, dominant recessive. That'll result in dominant, recessive, uh, dominant, dominant, and we have one fourth recessive in our F2. Now, the difference between monohybrid and dihybrid, as I previously stated, is that you're observing more than one trait and the same, you're observing two traits. Whereas with monohybrid, you're just observing the one trait. So 
If you think of dihybrid as just seeing two different monohybrids at the same time, then it'll make more sense. Uh, the difference between the Punnett square is that there are a lot more possibilities, and so you have to break it up, or we'll build it up into something bigger like this. So here we have the dominant trait for round, and the dominant trait, for, uh, the recessive trait for being wrinkled, the dominant trait for yellow, and the recessive trait for. Um, well, actually, this would be like, um, yeah, the dominant trait for yellow and the recessive trait for um, green. Um, and so here you would get dominant round. Eh, it's a little small. And here you would get dominant but with the recessive gene. And same with the color. Here you get dominant for round and recessive and dominant and so you get all these end up being round and yellow although some of them do retain the recessive trait here you get round and yellow here you would get wrinkled and green here you get round and green, and here you get wrinkled and yellow. Round and yellow, round and green, round and green. Round and yellow. This one's actually the same as this one here. So here you get, you pretty much get the idea already now. Same thing. Wrinkled and yellow. And here we're going to end up with our. 9, 3, 3, 1 ratio. Also, these are the probabilities that can result from a monohybrid cross, and these are the probabilities that can result from a dihybrid cross. To further analyze this data, you would need to use the sum and product rule for a probability, and also you would probably have to use uh, the binomial theorem in the chi-square test.